635 light years from Earth lies a planet cloaked in clouds and mystery. A world with oceans deeper than anything we've ever imagined, where gravity could crush you and the air itself might kill you. Scientists call it Kepler 22b, but what they won't tell you is whether we were ever meant to land there. In this video, we explore the secrets of this alien world, the terrifying science behind its atmosphere, and the one question no one dares to ask. Would humanity survive or vanish without a trace? Somewhere far beyond the glow of our sun lies a hidden world. It doesn't orbit our star or any planet we've ever sent a probe to. Instead, it dances around a distant sun-like star, Kepler-22, in a silent cosmic rhythm invisible to the naked eye. And yet, this planet, called Kepler-22b, has stirred imaginations more than almost any other exoplanet we've ever found. Why? Because it lies in what astronomers call the habitable zone, a narrow band of space around a star where conditions might be just right for liquid water to exist. Not frozen like on Mars, not vaporized like on Venus, but liquid, flowing, deep, alive. In other words, the basic ingredient for life as we know it. And Kepler-22b? It's not just in that zone, it's right in the sweet spot. A super-Earth, over twice the size of our planet, orbiting a star eerily similar to our own, with a year that lasts almost the same. 290 Earth days. It's as if someone took Earth, stretched it, dropped it into a different solar system, and left it waiting. But don't let the numbers fool you. What's happening on the surface of Kepler-22b could be unlike anything Earth has ever seen. This isn't just another rock in space. It's a planetary wild card. And the deeper we dig into its secrets, the more it starts to feel like it's hiding something. But here's the catch. Kepler-22b may look inviting from afar, but getting there? That's where the true challenge begins. Because the journey across 635 light years isn't just long, it may be impossible. Unless humanity unlocks a technology that today only exists in theory. So the next question is, what would it really take to get there alive? It's one thing to find a planet like Kepler-22b. It's another thing entirely to reach it. Kepler-22b is located 635 light years from Earth. That's six followed by 15 zeros in kilometers. To put it in perspective, if you hopped on the fastest spacecraft humanity has ever built, the Parker Solar Probe, you'd still need over 11 million years to get there. Not exactly a weekend trip. Even if we somehow developed engines that could push us to 10% the speed of light, it would still take more than 6,000 years to arrive. Entire civilizations would rise and fall before that mission even delivered a we're here message. So, how do we make the impossible possible? Enter the warp drive. Theoretical, controversial, and straight out of science fiction, this concept proposes bending space itself, allowing a ship to move without technically moving. Think of space as a fabric. Instead of flying through it, the warp drive compresses space in front of the ship and expands it behind. The result? The ship rides a kind of wave, surfing faster than light, without violating physics as we know them. Of course, that's just a theory. We've never built one. We've never tested one. But leading physicists, including Miguel Alcubierre, have done the math. And here's the craziest part. No law of physics says it's impossible. If one day humanity harnesses this power, Kepler-22b might be among the first destinations we choose. A mission to explore a second Earth, a leap into the deep unknown. But let's assume we do get there. We bend space, ride the warp wave, and after an unimaginable journey, we arrive. The ship slows, 
the planet appears before us. Blue, massive, silent. But what's actually waiting on the surface? The answer might be more beautiful and more dangerous than anything we've ever imagined. The ship emerges from its warp bubble, and there it is, Kepler 22b, hanging in the black void like a blue marble, vast, alien, and impossibly quiet. Its star, Kepler 22, glows softly in the distance. A G-type star, almost a twin to our own sun. From orbit, everything seems calm. The planet completes a full revolution around its star every 290 days, nearly the same as Earth. The temperature? Surprisingly familiar. An estimated 22 degrees Celsius, the kind of mild, temperate climate you might expect in early spring. But as the sensors begin to scan the surface, something becomes immediately clear. There are no continents, no mountains, no deserts, no cities, just water. A seemingly endless ocean stretching across the entire surface. A world where land may not exist at all. Scientists call planets like this ocean worlds, and they've long suspected their existence. But Kepler 22b? It might be one of the first real candidates. The planet's deep blue surface reflects light in a way that suggests liquid water is everywhere. But that doesn't mean it's safe. We still don't know what's beneath those waves. Is it salt water? Acid? Something we've never encountered before? And more importantly, what kind of atmosphere hovers above that ocean? Because from orbit, it looks thick, dense, almost like a veil hiding something. The ship begins its descent. The ocean below is endless, the clouds above heavy and slow. The deeper we go, the harder it becomes to tell where mystery ends and danger begins. Because what we find inside Kepler 22b's atmosphere may decide whether we survive or never leave at all. As the ship pierces the thick atmosphere of Kepler 22b, sensors begin to struggle. Visibility drops, pressure rises, and then contact. The ship hovers just meters above the planet's surface, a churning, dark blue ocean that stretches far beyond the horizon. No islands, no shores, just liquid silence. But here's where things get truly unsettling. That water? It's not Earth's water. At over twice the mass of our planet, Kepler 22b has much stronger gravity, enough to compress its atmosphere into a thick, heavy blanket. This increased pressure at sea level could push the planet's water into what scientists call a supercritical state. A strange phase where water is no longer fully liquid, but not quite gas either. In this state, water can behave in bizarre ways. It might become corrosive, chemically reactive, or even lethal upon contact. And if the air above is just as extreme, Breathing unprotected would be impossible. Your lungs could collapse within seconds, not from poison, but from pressure alone. This isn't science fiction. It's known as barotrauma, and it's a real danger astronauts train to avoid. On Kepler-22b, it could be instantaneous. So even if you survived the landing, even if you had shelter, food, and breathable air stored, you couldn't step outside, not without a suit built like a submarine, not without technology we haven't even invented yet. In short, the planet may look beautiful, but it's a trap in disguise. But there's one question that still haunts the mission. If the oceans are real, if the temperature is stable, if the conditions are almost right, could something be living there? The answer might be not above the waves, but deep within them. Floating just above the surface, the ship's sensors finally stabilize, and what they begin to reveal is both fascinating and terrifying. The atmosphere of Kepler 22b is thick, too thick, composed most likely of hydrogen, helium, and possibly even ammonia or methane, 
it behaves less like air and more like an invisible ocean pressing down on everything beneath it. And there's one major problem. There's no evidence of oxygen, not the kind humans can breathe. Which means that even with a protective suit, every second outside is a race against time and pressure. And then there's the temperature. From orbit, the planet appeared mild, around 22 degrees Celsius or 72 degrees Fahrenheit. That sounds survivable. But that's just the planet's equilibrium temperature, measured without the influence of atmospheric greenhouse gases. Inside this dense, multi-layered atmosphere, heat could be trapped like in a pressure cooker. What seems like springtime from above could be a scalding inferno at the surface. Similar to Venus, whose surface is hot enough to melt lead, not because it's close to the sun, but because its atmosphere doesn't let the heat escape. The same greenhouse effect that could be happening on Kepler-22b, silently, invisibly, deadly. Or, just as dangerously, it might have no atmosphere at all at the surface layer. In that case, temperatures could plummet at night, dropping hundreds of degrees in a matter of hours, freezing anything left unprotected. In short, this isn't just a question of heat or cold. It's a planet of extremes. A world where the environment itself shifts from survivable to lethal in minutes. But despite all this, the pressure, the temperature, the toxic atmosphere, Kepler-22b still has one thing that refuses to be ignored. Water. And wherever there's water, there's always a question that follows. Could something be alive down there? For centuries, humanity has looked to the stars with a single burning question. Are we alone? Kepler-22b might hold the answer. It has water, perhaps more than Earth. It has warmth, at least in theory. And it has time, billions of years to evolve life in isolation. But what kind of life would that be? If it exists, it wouldn't be dolphins or fish or seaweed. Not even visible life, most likely. Instead, scientists believe the first signs of life on Kepler-22b, if any, would be microbial. Extremophiles, like the ones found near Earth's deepest ocean trenches or inside volcanic vents. Tiny, resilient organisms that don't need sunlight or oxygen, only heat, minerals, and time. If Kepler-22b has hydrothermal vents beneath its vast oceans, then it may have exactly the right ingredients to spark life. And once it starts, life has a tendency to adapt, to spread, to survive in places we once thought impossible. But here's the chilling part. If microbial life does exist there, it may not want to be found. It may have evolved under pressure, in darkness for billions of years without disturbance. And what if we're the disturbance? What if the mere act of landing is enough to threaten a fragile alien ecosystem? Or worse, wake something up? But let's say we go further. We don't just observe, we try to stay. Could humans, with all our technology, ambition, and fragility, ever build a future on this planet? What would it take to not just visit Kepler-22b, but to survive there? Let's imagine humanity decides to stay. We land, we explore, and now we try to survive. But surviving on Kepler-22b would be a logistical nightmare. First, gravity. With over twice the surface gravity of Earth, your body would feel twice as heavy. Each movement would demand more energy your muscles and bones would have to adapt or fail. Then, the atmosphere. With its crushing pressure and unknown chemical composition, breathing would be impossible without full environmental suits or sealed habitats with constant life support. Building a colony would require floating structures on the ocean's surface, massive, buoyant platforms resistant to storms, pressure, and potential chemical corrosion. Think of them as space-age oil rigs turned into cities. Solar power might be limited by thick cloud cover, 
so energy would need to come from geothermal sources or nuclear fusion, both still in early development stages here on Earth. Food production? With no land for farming, humanity would have to rely on hydroponics or synthetic biology. Growing food from genetically engineered microbes or lab-cultured plants inside climate-controlled domes. And even if that all worked, we'd still be cut off. Any communication with Earth would take over 1,200 years round trip, far too long for any help, advice, or rescue. Colonizing Kepler-22b wouldn't be an expansion. It would be exile, a one-way ticket to the unknown with no turning back. So after all this, is it worth it? Is Kepler-22b our future? Or a cosmic mirror showing us just how unprepared we really are? In the final moments of this journey, we reflect on what this alien world truly means for science, for survival, and for the destiny of our species. Kepler-22b is a haunting reminder of how vast and unforgiving our universe truly is, a world that mirrors Earth in just enough ways to tempt us, but hides enough dangers to remind us we are still fragile travelers in a cosmic sea. Could we survive there? Maybe, but only with technology we've barely imagined and the courage to face the unknown. And if this planet made you wonder what else is out there, just wait until you see what happens if we try to survive on Proxima Centauri b. The truth about that planet will blow your mind. Click now to watch it and see what might be humanity's closest and most dangerous second home.